All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Bongo Ball Python, and the Bongo is fairly new. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons about five years ago, there was it was just coming out, it was new on the scene, and there wasn't a whole lot that was done with the Bongo. And here we are five years later, and I'm looking at all these Bongo combos. And let me tell you, it is a really impressive gene. I'd say a lot of people probably haven't heard of the Bongo. And I'd say overall, it's a dark morph. It's, it's similar to like cinnamon and GHI, but in certain kinds Combos, it actually lightens the background, which is kind of unusual. And I would say overall, it is a visually dominant morph. You can definitely tell it's in every combo. If you start mixing it with other genes, you can definitely see an influence, a pretty strong influence from the bongo. And it, it kind of differs from some genes with a really strong influence that you can actually see it in there, but it also complements other genes. It's just not totally overwhelming like some really dominant mutations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the amazing potential of the bongo. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with just the normal classic wild type ball python so you can get an idea of what the bongo looks like side by side with a normal. So the bongo is actually a co-dominant mutation. If you breed two of them together, 25% of the time you get a super bongo, but if you breed it to something else, you get half bongos and half normals. So this is what a normal looks like and this is what a bongo looks like. It's definitely different than a normal. It doesn't really look like any morph that I've really seen. It almost looks really subtle. If you look at it by itself, I'd say it almost looks like a unique, normal, like maybe like something, you know, I've actually seen some het pods that have kind of a crazy pattern like this, but you can definitely tell in this one, it seems like the bongos have a little bit more of like a granulated, like a pixelated pattern on the sides. And a lot of times, one of the characteristics of the bongo is you'll actually see some striping, especially right along the tail on the top. And you'll see in a lot of combos, you'll actually see some really strong striping. So this is the bongo with one copy of the bongo gene. If you have actually have two copies of the bongo gene, you get a super bongo. And this is what a super bongo looks like. It's pretty impressive. And you can definitely tell that it has a really strong influence of the striping almost all the way down the entire snake. And another kind of a characteristic when you start mixing it with certain genes, you'll actually see a lot of this streaking on the side instead of getting like the regular kind of a Roswell gray alien head kind of a pattern. It, it seems like it streaks it out quite a bit, which is pretty interesting. Kind of a characteristic of the bongo. So this ball python is actually a yellow belly. Yellow belly is pretty interesting. It's a really subtle morph. And by itself, I'd say it's really difficult to tell the difference between a yellow belly and just a normal classic wild type. But it mixes really well with a lot of combos and sometimes makes some really impressive combos like with the highways and the freeways. This is what happens when you mix bongo with yellow belly. Take a look at this. This is pretty unexpected for yellow belly in this bongo. It's, it's kind of interesting how it actually changes the pattern completely on the sides. And you can definitely tell that yellow belly is in the mix. And I'd say yellow belly is kind of tough because a lot of times you breed it into things. And it's always like a lot of times you're like, well, this is, you know, it has all these genes with a possible yellow belly. And as a matter of fact, I actually have a bumblebee that's possible yellow belly. You don't really know if it's in there. But let me tell you, if you mix it with the bongo, you can definitely see the yellow belly. Here's another one. This is the pinstripe. Pinstripe is one of my favorite morphs. It's actually a dominant mutation, about as pure gold as you can get in a snake. And the, the pinstripe has usually has a stripe right down the top. And then kind of characteristic of the pinstripe, it has kind of a clear sides with these little pinstripes coming right down the side of the ball python. Sometimes you can almost make out the alien heads in some cases. This is what happens when you mix pinstripe with the bongo. Take a look at this. And I would say as, as far as the pinstripe, the pinstripe is usually extremely visually dominant. So you mix it with something else. A lot of times you're struggling for dominance. Most of the times the pinstripe is just really overwhelming when you mix it. And you can definitely tell in this case, the pinstripe kind of went out a little bit, but you can definitely tell it kept the stripe all along the top, but it also broke up the sides, which is kind of interesting. You don't really have the, the typical pinstripes coming down the side and it almost brings up a little bit of white up uh, along the belly here too which is pretty interesting for this combo. 
Here's another one. This is the pastel, and pastel is, I'd say, like the bread and butter of the ball python industry. You can find them relatively inexpensive, sometimes for under a hundred dollars. And there's different lines of pastels. Sometimes they're really bright yellow, and sometimes they're a little bit browned out. This happens to be a really bright yellow one. Here's what happens when you mix pastel with bongo. Take a look at this combo. This is this is kind of unexpected because bongo, you know, a lot of times in a lot of combos it actually has a really dark background, and in this case. It really lightens the background, which is kind of interesting. You can actually see the little bit of striping right along the tail, which is characteristic of Bongo. And it's really neat how it takes the black outline and it outlines all the patterns on the sides. Makes for a really interesting combo. Here's another one, this is the Mojave. The Mojave is in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you breed two Mojaves together, 25% of the time you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. This is what happens when you mix Mojave with the bongo. Take a look at this. This is pretty much totally unexpected for me. This almost has a complete stripe all the way down from head to tail and has a streaking all along the sides. It's probably one of my favorite combos as far as bongos. There's actually other examples that look similar to this. I thought it was pretty interesting that it's uh, working so unusual with the Mojave, how it just kind of streaks the sides, all the patterns on the sides. It makes for a really awesome combo. Here's another one. This is the black pastel. The black pastel is another dark morph. You mix two black pastels together and 25% of the time you get a super black pastel, which is an almost black snake. As a matter of fact, you can make panda pides with the black snake, with the, with the, with the super, the, the, the panda pied is actually the super black pastel and the pied, which is a really stark black and white snake. If you've never seen the panda pied, you got to take a look at that. That's probably like the crown jewel for the black pastel and if you mix in bongo with black pastel take a look at this crazy snake i really love the sides on this one how it's just really you, you get you could definitely see there's like the pixelation almost like a granite type kind of a effect to the sides and kind of streaks the sides and then you get this line right down the top and i'd say it, it seems like when you're mixing the bongo with certain genes you kind of get the same kind of effect but you don't get that same effect through all the morphs sometimes it can be really unexpected really variable from gene to gene Here's another one. This is the Firefly, which is the fire and the pastel. You mix those two genes together. The pastel brings in the yellow and the fire really lightens the background and really enhances the contrast, brings out a lot more yellow. This is what happens when you mix Firefly with Bongo. Take a look at this. This was totally unexpected for me. This is a really wild looking snake. I would have never guessed that that was a Firefly with a Bongo. It almost has kind of a dirty head, almost like a champagne which is kind of interesting. And to up along the top, it almost looks like it might have some enchi in it or something, which is a really unique combination, how it kind of streaked out the sides, but in this case, it actually streaked it with kind of a solid yellow color. Almost looks like uh, an enchi or something, but it just has the bongo, the fire, and the pastel in this mix. Here's another one, the spider. The spider's kind of interesting. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that shy away from spider because of the neurological issues and the head wobble. And the spider is usually a really visually dominant morph. There's not a lot you can really mix with the spider to completely eliminate the spider. And take a look at this when you mix in the bongo with the spider. Take a look at this crazy snake. And the first thing that I think of when I look at this is the, the spider blackhead. The blackhead, essentially what it does is it completely changes the pattern of the spider and it also eliminates the head wobble and I've actually seen a few videos with the, the, the bongo bees which is the bongo and the spider and from what I'm seeing on the internet from some of the videos it almost looks like the bongo acts like the blackhead where it completely eliminates the head wobble I haven't really seen any data on it I haven't seen anyone else agree with me on that but as far as what I've seen just a few snakes on YouTube that seems like what's happening here between the bongo and the spider spider. 
Here's another one, the Lemon Blast. The Lemon Blast is actually two jeans. It's actually the Pinstripe and the Pastel. It makes a really awesome combo. And the, I actually make quite a few Lemon Blasts. They're pretty inexpensive. They're really awesome snakes. And here's what happens when you mix the Bongo with the Lemon Blast. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is probably one of my favorite combos. It's just, it's almost like a solid color. It just has tiny little freckles all down the sides. You can definitely see the influence of the bongo the stripe right down the top of course the pinstripe has the stripe but the bongo on top of the lemon blast seems like it really keeps the stripe right down the top and just kind of gives us this really washed out almost like a buttery color to the snake pretty awesome here is a Pastavi. A Pastavi is actually the Pastel and the Mojave. Makes for a really awesome combo. I'd say this is probably one of the best things you can do with two really simple jeans, the Mojave and the Pastel. And it makes it, the, essentially what it does is the, the, the two jeans working together really brings out a lot of the contrast of the snake. These are really awesome. Here's what happens when you mix Bongo in with a Pastavi. Take a look at this. You can almost see a pattern in some of these. In some cases, you actually, you can actually see this this line coming right down the tail. Sometimes it goes down the entire snakes and sometimes it stops about on the bottom third or maybe halfway down. And you can definitely see the streaking down the sides from the bongo. Pretty awesome. Here's another one, this is the Kingpin, and if you're wondering what the Kingpin is, it is actually a pinstripe and a lesser. This one happens to be 100% het azanthic, but you can't really see hets in the visual appearance of the snake, so you really can't tell uh, if it's het azanthic unless you actually know the breeding. Here's what happens when you mix Bongo in with a Kingpin. Take a look at this. This is one of the most awesome snakes that I've seen. It's, it's, it's really unusual. I, I'd say I've never really seen a snake that looks any anything like this that's kind of what makes it unique in my book and it, it seems like it you know it definitely keeps this really strong stripe seems like when you're mixing pinstripe with the bongo in any combo you keep that really strong stripe right down the top and a lot of times with the bongo it's completely wiping out the sides sometimes in most cases it'll give you a little bit of freckling right down the sides of the snake Here's another one, this is the GHI. The GHI is another dark morph, and it stands for Gotta Have It, GHI. It's a pretty awesome morph, and you mix it with a lot of jeans, and a lot of times you get a really dark background. Here's what happens when you mix the GHI with the bongo. Take a look at this. This is a really neat snake. It has like, uh, the uh, there's the uh, Mojave GHI, which looks almost like this, but the, the Mojave GHI has a really black, it's almost a jet black snake with this kind of a light, Light, little dash line right down the top and in this case the bongo is actually kind of acting the same way except it's bringing a lot more color on the sides so it's almost like the transition between a light morph and a dark morph kind of acting halfway sometimes it acts like a light sometimes it acts like a dark and sometimes in this case it almost seems like it's 50 50 kind of acting kind of halfway in between Here's another one, this is the Superfly. The Superfly is a super pastel and fire in the same snake, really awesome. This is what happens when you mix the Superfly with the Bongo, take a look at this crazy snake. And the first thing I noticed on this is how light the background is, really unexpected. And the, the first thing that I kind of looked, I looked at this and I was like, this looks like a freeway or a highway with pastel in it, which is probably the first snake I've ever seen without the, the asphalt and the yellow belly or the gravel and the yellow belly that makes the highways and the freeways. This looks almost like a highway or freeway, but it doesn't have the yellow belly and it doesn't have the asphalt or gravel. This is super pastel, fire and bongo, pretty awesome. Here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon's a dark morph. The super cinnamon is almost a jet black snake. Works really well as a dark morph in with a lot of combos. Here's what happens when you mix cinnamon with bongo. Take a look at this crazy snake. And I think out of all the dark morphs that I've seen, this is probably one of my favorites. You have this really strong line right down the top and then it starts really dark and then you have this streaking on the side with a really light kind of almost like a calico coming down right the belly. But the trend transition coming down is a lot more gradual than you'd see in a calico. Looks really awesome. Just two jeans, just the cinnamon and the bongo. It's pretty awesome. 
Here's the last one I want to show you. This is the Firefly Yellow Belly. So this is, if you're actually trying to produce the brightest yellow snake that you can possibly get, this is exactly what you want to go for. You want to use the Fire, the Pastel, and the Yellow Belly. And all three of them interact to give you a really high contrast snake that is really bright yellow. Here's what happens when you mix the Bongo in with a Firefly Yellow Belly. Take a look at this snake. This is crazy like no snake I've ever seen before. It almost looks like it kind of works the same way with that last one that kind of looked like a pastel highway or a pastel freeway. You can definitely see the influence of all the genes working together, really lightening the background. And just look at the pattern on this, how it really scrambles it up. And you can definitely tell that it has bongo in it with this really strong line right down the bottom third or half of the snake. That's a really awesome combo. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Raymond Garcia asks, what is the minimum amount of snakes you would need to start a rodent breeding operation? And that is a very good question. I would say probably you could just start a rodent breeding operation with even one ball python. And pretty much the rule of thumb is you need one female rat per ball python. So for example, if you had five ball pythons, kind of the rule of thumb would be you would need five female rats and then one male rat and kind of rotate the male through the females. And the, I'd say probably the biggest dilemma when you're first starting out in rats is you actually have to euthanize those rats. You start breeding rats you find out pretty quick they're pretty cute and pretty friendly and some people just find that they can't really euthanize them to, to feed to their snakes and I'd say in some cases you end up with a whole bunch of pet rats and you have a whole bunch of pet snakes at the same time. There's actually other options. You can actually breed rodents and then take those rodents, maybe bring them to a reptile store and exchange the live rodents for a frozen thawed or maybe you could do like a credit for some store merchandise or something like that and in the reptile industry let me tell you rodents are like the universal <laughs> currency everybody wants rodents for something even you know live or frozen they, they have value so you never really go wrong with rodents another thing you can actually do is breed rodents and then sell them as pets usually you make a little bit more money if you sell them as pets and then you can use that money to actually go back and buy some frozen thoughts so there's some options there if you have problems euthanizing your rats so that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.